Now, if you are thinking about, I just liked solve by factoring so much, let's see how we, uh, that would have worked out if we chose solve by factoring, meaning our first, first step was not to see the perfect square, but to get this into standard form. So we would have started by take away 25 on both sides. Let's see how it turns out with a different method. It should definitely turn out to give us the same solution. What we're showing is just there are different methods that are at work. I need to pause and th think about that one. There are different methods that you can use. They'll all take us to the same answer, but different types of equations are best used. Different methods call different equations call for different methods. How about that? And it is important to know all of them, but you can begin to have preferences. Solve by factoring is usually a preference, but we have to see that it is something that we can factor. So try to just sponge everything in. Don't make any judgments about, well, I see which way is better, which way is worse. We really have to see all the different possible equations we've got to deal with. And once we see everything, then we can decide, well, what maybe is the thing that I would like to become an expert at? And what are the other ones that I just want to know really well, but maybe I don't use so much? How about that? All right, solve by factoring. So a pair of numbers multiplied together equals negative 16, but added together equals positive 6. All right, negative 16, positive 6. That's going to be positive 8 with negative 2. And once we have it factored, where do we go next? Two separate equations. Is it x minus 2 equals 0? Or is it x plus 8 equals 0? It's both, but we like to say the solution could be one or the other. So let's solve these. The 2 with negative 2 cancel. There's our x equals 2. That's nice. We see same solution for the first one. And you're starting to see same solution for the second one. No green on this side because we see it so quickly. x equals negative 8. So two different methods. They're taking us to the same solution. Now we must discuss completing the square. In the previous example, we looked at this trinomial x squared plus 6x plus 9. And once it was factored, we definitely saw that it was just an x plus 3 squared. Some clues that we have a shortcut from this trinomial is that it, the third term, it is a perfect square. It's 3 times 3. And if I were to add 3 and 3, I get my middle term, positive 6. So that tells me it's, it is a perfect square trinomial. That's really the term for it, and it can be written as its factor with an exponent of 2. Now one thing we can know about completing the square. If we just know the first two terms, x squared plus 8x, I have a way to figure out what number belongs here that would leave me with a trinomial that is a perfect square. And it has to do with that pattern that we recognized before, that our th third number squared our third number, if we took the square root and doubled it, that will give us the middle number if it's a perfect square trinomial. Okay, got that? Our third number, it's the same thoughts we had about, hey, a 9 is 3 times 3, and 3 plus 3 equals 6. We're saying, okay, just go for the square root of that third number, would be the 3, and then 3, 3, 6. That's, so that's sort of how we establish this pattern. If we know the second number, this middle coefficient, we have to work in reverse. So instead of do square root and then times 2, we say first, do divide by 2. 8 divided by 2 equals 4. Let's put another 8 in there. There's the divide by 2 instead of times 2, and instead of square root, we'll do square. Okay? So this coefficient on x, if we want to know what number will complete the square, the pattern is divide by 2, square it. So I know I need a positive 16 in there. x squared plus 8x plus 16. That's a 4 times 4. That's a 4 plus 4. x plus 4 squared. 
this 4 that you see right here definitely will be the same number that shows up. Now we'll see an example where we need to be cautious about signs, but definitely if you say cut it in half gives me a 4, I know a 4 belongs there. But the, with the, the constant in the trinomial, I still would need to do exponent of 2 to say what belongs there. Let's do another couple of examples completing the square. x squared minus 10x. We're just going to complete the square. I don't even really want to have that equal sitting there just yet. x squared minus 10. The only thing I'm thinking about is, what's the third number? What is the third term in this trinomial? What is the constant? What is the number? That 10 should have an x. Okay. That looks a lot better. Apologize if that threw you off there. x squared minus 10x. Those are the terms that we need to have. It's the number that's missing. So if, if that was just x squared minus 10, well there's no complete the square to do with that. It just doesn't work that way. The terms you need are x squared and minus 10x. I mean, you could figure out what that middle term should be, but we don't put that to use anywhere in the future. What we do put to use in the future is when we have the x squared and the regular x term. Okay, so took an opportunity to, to point that out. Completing the square begins with we see the x squared we see the regular x, we don't see the number, and we use this formula to come up with what should that third number be, the third term, to make a perfect square. We know it's take this and cut it in half. If it's a minus 10x, we have to use a negative 10. Negative 10 cut in half, negative 5. So that's going to be an x minus 5 squared. And negative 5 times negative 5, definitely this third term, that constant will always be positive when we're completing the square, always. So negative 5 times negative 5, positive 25. Why is that third term always going to be positive? Well, it's because anything times itself, negative times negative, positive, positive times positive, positive. And what's that third number coming from? It's coming from... If I were to take this and do FOIL, I'd have my x minus 5 times another x minus 5. Really going into some depth here. If I was to FOIL that, so I know that's how I write x minus 5 squared if I want to FOIL. x squared minus 5x minus 5x. There's the x squared minus 10x. And that last, negative 5 times negative 5, there's the positive. So third term, that constant, it will always be positive when we're completing the square. Let's do a couple more examples of completing the square, because it can get a little bit trickier. Let's do x squared plus 5x. Complete the square. It's the same pattern at work. So I need to do 5 divided by 2. It won't divide evenly. Leave it as a simplified improper fraction. And if it doesn't divide evenly by 2, it's actually going to automatically be simplified. So there's our halfway points. I know from that positive 5 over 2 that I can write this as x plus 5 over 2 squared. But definitely it's not a 5 over 2 that I want in that spot for my constant. It's 5 over 2 squared. So just do numerator, denominator separately. That's 5 times 5, 25. 2 times 2, 4. So that last term was plus 25 fourths. All right. It was a little bit trickier because the number we needed to cut in half was odd. So it left us with a fraction. But same moves, and we just see a fraction there. It's not, it's not, it hasn't been common so far, but there's really nothing that should tell us that we can't expect it. Absolutely, we can expect to have answers like that. So it's no problem. We're, we haven't seen it too much yet, but no problem.